All right, hey, it's Joey here with Dixie Doggers. We're up here at Hickory Crossings once again. Um, we're at the, this is our first Lanier Shaw Memorial Band. Uh, we just lost Lanier and we'd like to say, uh, you know, he was he was a, a statute in the Bay Pen family. I've, I've been in it a few years. These guys have known him a lot longer than I have. And the short time I was around him, I mean, he really, really was a great man. So I got a couple of guests here with us tonight. They, I mean, I met JT and them, I don't know, a couple of years ago, and they've helped me along the way here, you know, taught me some stuff. And, you know, tonight we're just going to get get a feel on their outlook of it and, you know, how they feel about the sport, the way they look at it, the type of dogs, where they're from, you know, the back history and all that good shit. So y'all introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about it. All right. My name is JT Mack, uh, born and raised in Tignor, Georgia. Uh, just moved up to North Georgia mountains. Um, I'm 21 years old. I've been baying since I was probably about 16 years old. Uh, Corey died, a good buddy of mine, is the one who got me started in it. Uh, I used to go with him everywhere, and then I started pat, uh, breaking off on my own, getting my own few dogs, and I'm doing my own thing. Just went with it from there, huh? Oh, yeah. I got you, all right. Tell us about I'm it. Shelby Cruz. I didn't get into this until I met JT, what, two years ago? Mm -hmm. I got my first dog from Corey and Jenny Dye, and he was good to to start me on, but asked to further my career in yeah. it. You know, I placed him in a hunting home, and they love him. And then I had he had given me a dog, Showtime, who'd come from Matt Lee, and Showtime, he's the yeah. one who really... Really started, pushed it. Yeah, he's yeah, the one who really, really, got you going yeah, really started everything. <laughs> I uh, we had been in Benton, Tennessee. It was one of the first times that I won with him. And he had just come back from an injury. He had got cut here, and he had got an internal parasite from mm -hmm. the hog saliva. And we had to fight to get him back. But now that he's good, he's a whole different dog. There we go. But, yeah, it's all the different diseases that a hog can carry, too, that nobody thinks about. Yeah. And it was just, you know, feed him more, feed him more. But it really wasn't. It was that parasite was taking all of his nutrients out. Just just draining him down. Yeah, yeah. so we had to feed him just tuna, salmon, and rice is the only way that we were able to kill it. But it took probably There's six a tip months. right there. Yeah. You yeah, run into was, that. There's a tip right there, you know. It was six months that it took him to gain a healthy weight back to where we could put him back to work okay. and he could eat. But luckily, the help of our vet and everything, we were able to get him back. But I mean, a lot of woods dogs that get cut. And, oh yeah, we don't. I mean, we don't think about that. To anybody? No. Yeah. Yeah, we don't. We don't think about that. And that's, I know what's happened with me and my woods dogs. You know, you're like, after a bad injury or something, you're like, man, this dog won't put on weight. You know, yeah. you don't know what's wrong. Like I said, you don't think about all this stuff like that. Yeah. The hogs here, it's a controlled environment. They're yeah. inoculated, you know, they're tested. Yeah. Uh, in the woods, it's not. You know, it's a yeah. dangerous thing either way you I mean, go about it. And it happened from a clean hog here, so imagine yeah. what it could. Oh, yeah, in the, the woods. woods it's, yeah, in the woods, it could be a totally different yes. story. It could be much worse than I mean, here. I mean, with the pseudo outbreak that happened even in Claxton, I mean, that was a, that was a terrible thing. And I know a lot of people lost good dogs that, yeah. you know, they hated to lose. Get in get get in depth on that that a little bit more the pseudo outbreak in Claxton there. Um, I'm not really sure where it come from yeah. or what or how it happened. Um, I know that I don't know if they were hunting and it it just had got transmitted to one of the dogs and then the dogs were around others and it kind of spread so quickly that nobody yeah. could get it under control and I know that. It was awful that they lost dogs and pseudos is, it's just so hard to to bring a dog back from there yes. isn't many that you can bring a dog back from. I've, I've lost i lost a dog to that and uh it's like you said there's not a lot of bringing it back yeah it was it was rough on a lot of people but well i mean things it's happened i mean it's part of part of the sport oh yeah i mean there's there, I mean, there's there's downsides. There's there's you know bad things happen. That's in any sport. I oh, mean, yeah. you look at Olympic athletes. Yeah. They're every. I mean, every time they have a, a trial or yeah. something, they get hurt. They get injured. You know, yeah. same thing with the dogs. They're athletes. Yeah. What kind of a what kind of what's your favorite breed of dog for for the Bay Pen? I'd say well, we like cat holes. Cat holes. I mean, being from the mountains, we have a few hounds here and there, but yeah, we we probably got. 
over 10 pure bad cattle of registered good stuff on the yard. I mean, Hell yeah. I mean, we've, we've got blood that a lot of people are, you know, they forgot about. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of the dogs that are winning now, everybody's obsessing over them and they want to get puppies out of those dogs, but they're forgetting about the foundation what, dogs. What, what dogs are you, are you talking about? The ones that's when you want, they want to get puppies out of? Go ahead and say it. Well, everybody. <laughs> go ahead and say everybody it. Everybody wants a goose puppy. Goose. There yeah, we go. That's right. Everybody wants a goose puppy. Everybody, everybody see, look, this. The, we had the same conversation. Who was it? Who was sitting there? It was, uh, wasn't it Raymond? It was Raymond. Yeah, Raymond. Yeah. We were sitting there, and because he was like, he was talking about, he was like, you know, there's some good dogs down there. He said, but everybody forgets about the dogs on the East Coast. And one thing is, I think it's the, the Texas and Louisiana area and stuff yeah. like that. It's, it's produced more, you know, it's yeah. put out there. So we're put, we're putting this out there now. So, and they have different caliber hogs and yeah, it's caliber dogs as we got different caliber. It, it, it's yeah. different yeah. from yeah, place to place. Producing those grittier, just absolute killer dogs out there. But then when they, if you were to take those dogs out there, come here, they're always going to catch out because they're, they're bred to pay, yeah. pay the hogs that are out that there. Are there. Yeah. yeah. They're so much rougher than they are here yeah so i mean when we take our dogs out there they're not doing you know what they do here yeah and i mean it's kind of like you know we're the lower class when we go over there and it's not like you know they're not everybody's friendly yeah everybody it's not they're not like they're not treating you like yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. The, I mean, the the friendly. level of the dog deal yeah but the level of the dogs are different because yeah you know we have to have lighter i mean lighter dogs for, the for lighter like yeah because if you don't they're gonna catch yeah. you out that's like when i first started bringing the jags i mean you know, there was no bait, and it was just like, you know, they're just going in there and catching. Yeah. And we were going out to Texas to the terrier trials and stuff, and yeah. they would bay some, you know, because the hog, like you said, it's a, it's a different hog. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's and you got to... The caliber of the dogs and the caliber of your Exactly. Hogs. And now you're talking about that old foundation blood and stuff like that. What do y'all got up your sleeve? What y'all got up and coming? Big secret, man. Yeah. Mix it. Yeah, there you go. It's, yeah, it's a, some of it, just, some of it, you got to keep under wraps because then you, you're like, oh well. You I'm know, still you learning know. all this bay pen stuff. So yeah. I'm still new to it. I'm the you know I'm old woods guy, which I yeah I guess everybody started yeah. in the woods, you know, yeah. oh, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. And uh, which you know I, I, I've I don't I'm not like I said I, I'm not a, a bay pen handler or none of that stuff. Yeah. I finally got me a couple of dogs that, you know, that I can get in there and, and work with. They, I, I don't know what they're going to do much yet, but well, no, I'm pretty, it's, it's from good stock. I know yeah. that. Yeah. And, uh, but I mean, if it wasn't for guys like y'all, that would help guys right. like us. Yeah, I mean, the Bay Pen family is what turned me on those, all this. Yeah. Even those foundation dogs, like Miss Joy Shaw, her, Joy's Bodacious was his name. He is one of those foundation dogs. Yeah. He's one of the ones that have produced multiple you know pen dogs that have i mean have been legendary dogs yeah i mean she's one of those people who you know has the bloodline that has you know they're just legendary she's dogs. 26 years yes. in the breeding i mean if you ask, that she's, you ask you know, these new people i mean even if they've been in it two mm -hmm. three years you ask them who i mean you talk them names they wouldn't even know yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. but like, i mean it's who's advertised really yeah, yeah. like nobody knows about like like yoho he yeah. was a, he was a legendary dog. I mean, you've got B Yoho, like Joy's Bodacious dog. There's Blair's Dugger Bottom Bubba. I mean, the Bonnie and Clyde dogs that produced him. Yeah. I mean, you have all those dogs that everybody's forgot about. Mm -hmm. But I mean, most of our yard goes back to that. That's what it's based on. Yeah. yeah. I I know everybody's Foundation. like obsessed over like the Alexander stuff. Yeah. But I mean, everybody has their liking to different dogs. Yeah. And the Alexander stuff is really really nice. Yep. I mean, Crow was the nicest one that I've, I mean, I've ever seen. And it's terrible that he was, you know, he's gone now. Yeah. But, I mean, Caitlin Anderson, she has Alex. And he's going to be a super, super nice dog. Yeah. But I don't think yeah. I've seen him run. She's no real shit on this stuff, no. Yeah, ain't no doubt. Well, that's, that's what yeah. we want. She's we, studied it for sure. We want somebody yeah. who's, you know, and, and like I said, that's another thing behind the podcast deal. But we video this and, you know, we put it on YouTube. And, you know, we, we're getting to where we're getting some good followers stuff, but most of the time nobody's even seeing this. They're yeah. listening to it riding down the road. Yeah. They, I mean, there's guys, like I said, there's some guys, some young guys out in Texas. Oh, Mew knows. He knows who I'm talking about, Brandon. Hey, this, this kid, I know he's going to be listening to this right here. Mm -hmm. And 
So everything that we're telling them, you know, a lot of it, I mean, like I said, I think he's still in high school. Yeah. All this stuff, he's absorbing it, you know, like yeah. a sponge. Oh, yeah. And so and when you got somebody that knows their facts, yeah. and he's probably never heard of any of these these dogs, these yeah. foundation dogs, because the part of the country they're in, that's not what's produced. Yeah. You know, it's like you said, it's a whole different thing. But And, and true enough, you can take any dog and you breed it enough times, mm. it's going to throw some champions yeah. sooner or later. But you, like that, you have... You may get one puppy out of the litter. Like exactly. Back back in the day, you'd have every. I mean, every. You may call one or two, but every one of them was. I mean, doing yeah. something. And most of the time, you put them in the woods. Oh yeah. You yeah. know. Oh, that's, that's what half of my puppies that I started. I'm gonna run the bay pen. I have people come and I ask her. People, this. Hey, you got any wood dogs? You got any wood dog puppies? I was like, yeah, I got. I mean, they gonna make it because I know they'll be in the wood, uh, the pen. I just. Yeah. I just. You gotta put them what them. you want them yeah. to do. Yeah. Do y'all, do y'all uh, like any kind of dogs that y'all have? Y'all ever worked them on cattle or anything like that? Livestock or or is that, that bloodline is it handy for that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I know I'm they're very life. versatile I'm, dogs. I mean, they, really, what I do is, as far as like my job, I've always trained saddlebreds or walking horses. Okay. We've had horses. I've got a a twenty three style barn, the whole brood mare set up. I have an inside arena. We do horses. Damn. I mean, we do the whole shebang. That's all my family's ever done. That's our livelihood. Mm -hmm. And, like, the dogs will go out there in the round pen, and they'll be working those horses. We have a puppy, oh, yeah. Ruth. She's only... Ten months old. Yeah, she's ten months old, and we made it perfect with her when she was three months old here. Yeah. And we placed second um, behind Miss Joy's dog, yeah, who was very... I mean, she he was a whole lot older than she was, and we'd mm -hmm. done that run just to get my older dog a run. I figured she would stand at our feet, but she went in there. She got rolled up the side of the wall, come back down, started baying. So we were very happy with her. And at the house, she's baying the horses. She's baying cats, coons. Oh, yeah. She'll treat. You, yeah, you can she, actually, she you can treats. actually put an empty cage in yeah. on the ground and, and shake it, and she will sit there. She'll sit there. She's got it. She's got it there to bite. Yeah. It. I know we went over. Uh, we went over Charlie Tucker's house one day, and he had some young dogs out there. And they, I think they were baying a bucket the first time I went over there. Yeah. I mean, and it was a whole the whole litter. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, they were wearing that son of a bitch out. I was yeah. like, Jesus Christ! You know, like I said, all I had was rough dogs, running yeah. catch dogs, and terriers. Yeah. Really, ain't not you, much baiting going on. Dogs, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean that's what we've been putting on the tailgate. Yeah. Like I said, and when I first started coming to bay pens, I was like, "I'm this ain't gonna be me." Yeah. I, I can tell you right now, I was like, "This, I, I just, I don't see where." And I know, I wonder how. Many, and I've heard several guys over here, the first time they come, they're like, "Oh my man, my dog would do way better than that." Blah blah blah, and all this stuff. I'm like, "We'll put him in there." Yeah. Yeah, oh well, I, I'm, I'm not gonna spend that money. Well, hell, I did. Yeah. I, I know mine wasn't gonna bait no well, perfect, but I'm gonna put it in there. We, I'm gonna participate, right. you know. Like, I heard a guy tonight, he said that he could bring his beagle and he could win. Well, where's that beagle at? <laughs> yeah, get that damn That's beagle out That's what I'm saying. Where's that, where is that beagle at? Yep. Hey, in this he podcast right promise. here, we're all, we can talk shit. I, I mean, don't care. I mean, that's was, the way it is. We can talk he trash. He was what I mean. all about, you know, oh. yeah. well, I'm not spending the money. But if you know it can win. Why the hell are you talking? What, what about the money that you're going to get back? I'll pay for him to put it in. Yeah, that's yep. what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guarantee you, I'll pay for him to put it in. Yeah. Get that some gun. Let's do it. Yeah, I yeah. want to see it. Yeah. That'd I be, mean, if you have a dog of that caliber, put it in there because that's what we're yeah. here for yeah. is and, to watch dogs. And, you know, the one of the first times that I ever came, I brought a, brought a jack, put her in there, and we placed. And I was shocked. I was like, Holy shit, you know, yeah. and I, it like it, you never know. Yeah, you, you, don't, know you don't know. I mean, you know, if your dog dog is a dog, but like I yeah. said, then the, you have hiccups just like I mean. Yeah, I mean, I've, I, and then I've had dogs that were really, really had a you know I, I like they, they're really going to do this, okay. and they didn't do shit yeah. because they had never been hauled for four or five yeah. hours, and yeah. or the people I've had, and, and then the people dogs, don't, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know. As we were talking about Ruth. Her mama, she's she's a dog that goes back to beep and yo ho, and she's a super well bred dog. Mm -hmm. um, on her mother's side, she goes back to a dog that Martha Fillingham and Tommy Burke had, a uh, Brutus. And Brutus is out of Two Diamond Sparkle, and not a lot of people know about Sparkle. She was the youngest female to ever be a perfect at Earl's, yeah. and she was she was a very nice dog, and everybody, you know, again they forget about those foundation dogs that have you know made it what it is mm -hmm. but 
poor Nelly, she just she cannot she, she handle the people. She won't ever leave I the mean, yard. I mean, she we won't even hold. I mean, yeah, well, there's no I can, sense in I can blood track her every night and then. Mm -hmm. uh, she's been started on it, but and I can bay her at the house. But and just, she will bay a perfect for as long as you want to sit there and watch her. But if you bring her around other people, she's, she's gonna roll over and want you to cut her. I mean, yeah. she's just one of those dogs you can't do it, and it's a shame that she. Yeah. She is she, that She's way. not scared of no. people. Right? She wants no, to she, love it. Yeah. She wants some attention. Yeah. She's, a, she's, she's a about like that. The more people we hunt with, the more she will not hunt. Yeah. yeah. Like it, 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 yeah, we could, I mean, and I mean, this uh, dog now is Now that you're saying that, that's making me think it's what it is. Yeah, yeah I mean, she is, I mean, oh, yeah. she's like straight kid, just bam, like, yeah. she. I mean, she's a bulldog. I mean. But more people there, she, hell with that. I mean, oh, yeah. she was going out the first time we ever carried out, like, you know, and of course it's different all over the country. You tell some people, you're like, yeah, man, my dog went out 200 yards. And you're like, that ain't shit, you know. I mean, she went out 300 yards. It's a it's a bulldog. Yeah. And I mean, she was hunting. I was like, well, hell yeah, that's all right, you know. And uh, which, like I said, we use run and catch. That's yeah. our style of dog. Just because you don't hunt the way I hunt, don't run yeah. your shit, you know. But anyway, the more people we started going hunt with, you know, that was with us, she didn't yeah. want to go. She wanted some attention. And I, and I like, you know, I do. Yeah. I guess I'm one of those guys that just, I know they're working stock and they have a job to do. But like yeah. you said, she'll stay uh, at the house. You're not going to call her. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no, she's going to stay at the house. She'll die in my yard. The way I think about it is, it's like service animals. Yeah. You know, when they're, they're working, like a person who's blind, you know, they come in with their dog, that dog is there to work. You know, that's the way I feel about my dogs. Like, don't come pedal, you know, don't touch them. They're not here to be your pet. You know, they're there to do to do a job, and I feel like it, it should be that way when you take them out. Yeah. You know, they're there to do a job, and it's the same mindset, you know, as to dogs that help the disabled and stuff like that. Yes. I mean, they're there to work, you know, when you're at home, you know. They can be buddy, over, yeah. Yeah, let them pet them, but when they're out there, they're doing their job. It's business. Yeah, I don't, I don't want people to, you know, be loving all up on them, you know, exactly. especially before we go into the pen. Because those dogs, they're lunging, you know, they're mm -hmm. wanting to get in there. They hear the dog in front of them, you know, in there catching or baying, oh, whatever. They fired want to, up. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, they want to go in there. And you want them to be yeah. fired up, too. Yeah, yeah. I don't, and there's a lot of people that walk by, oh, you know, you're like, yeah. ah, you know, don't yeah, do you that. Don't touch my dog. But that's the way I feel about it. And I, I know a lot of friends that feel the same way. Oh, I'm the, I'm the same way. And I've, all my kids... I've always told them, like if they were little, they'd walk up to a dog, they would stand back, look at it, and wait for the owner to say, it's okay. Can you? They never never asked, can I pet no. your dog? No. You let them ask, let them tell you, say, hey, yeah, it's okay for you to pet my dog. Yeah. Because that dog might be a service animal. It might be a full trained attack dog. Yeah. You know, you never know. And, you know, if more people would think like that, it, the dog world would be a hell of a lot better place, you uh -huh. know. Um, on, on the subject that we're talking about, like I said, with the, with the Catahoulas and stuff, Besides the Catahoula, what would be like the number two breed that, not, maybe not that you would even own, but the number two breed that, that you've seen work in a pen? Black mouth. Black, Black mouth yeah. cur. Okay. Yeah. I got you. That's, that's you know, I, I was always more toward the black mouth cur and stuff, and I, I guess I don't, I don't know. I never was I, I, with the Catahoulas, you know, I just, yeah. just never got it. The, where we're at, there's not a lot, you know, yeah. they're, they're really not. Everybody that's got that's got them around our area. Well, Kayla Cooper lives close to us, but you know she got some working dogs now. Oh, yeah. But this was before then. You know, this has been years and years ago. The people that had Catahoulas, they were they were pets. You know, they're, oh, they're pretty. You know, it's like that's how people are today. And then when I started seeing how they really worked, I was like, oh, yeah, that's what they're bred to do. That's for sure. And and no as doubt. far as the black mouth, I know there's a Ladner black mouth and. Mm -hmm. Mr. We Kurt, had, shout out to Mr. Kurt Lett. Yeah, that's right. And I've seen a lot of really, really good dogs come off of his stuff. And mm -hmm. I mean, amazing dogs. There's people talk. I mean, uh, like uh, both ways about it, you know. Yeah. Up north where we're from in North Georgia, they using, there's a guy that we. Yeah, Danny we, Wilson, we, that's all he owns. Yeah, and we that's got seven other people. Yeah, that's a big deal. You know, and he don't live too far seen. from, well, a few, couple, of, three hours, I think. He's not too far from us, so there's a lot of Ladner they, blood around. They use they use them on bear. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and they, and they'll treat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, one of my buddies from school just got a Ladner cur puppy a few months ago. He and he, I mean, and some of his dogs they have the physique, the build. Oh, yeah. They have the all around, you know, from the ones I've been around. Like yeah, I said, Michigan and uh, Chad Litter was like, you know, we can get any of those. Oh yeah, those yeah, yeah those guys. Like, they're like. Sell some? Yeah, they're like, dude, get, I want some of them, you know. 
just for tree dogs running bear. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that, well, squirrel. squirrel. Yeah, and that's the thing about it. I know they'll take them and they'll go out there and tree a squirrel, work a hog, work a cow. Yeah. Go tree coons, run a bear. Oh, yeah. Same thing with the Catahoulas. I know people that have Catahoulas that do every damn thing with oh, yeah. them. You know, yeah. but I guess it's just how much time and effort you want to put in that yeah. dog in the caliber of dog that you had. And like you said, it goes a lot of it goes back to the bloodlines and keeping those bloodlines alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, and no, you don't have to have ten thousand damn puppies out and in the I'll world. Stretch it out. You can yeah. have ten good ones yeah. and keep that bloodline alive. Like the Dixieland line of Jags that we have. Yeah. There's not a lot. There's people that say, oh, that's Dixieland. No, it might have a little bit of Dixieland, but as far as a full 100% Dixieland dog, Mr. Scott Alls, the one that started the line, he gave me the line. I mean, they, he said the Dixieland name is yours now and all that stuff. So, And Clay Austin's the one that, that helped me do all of it. Mm-hmm. I tell people all the time, I was like, you, you don't have that. Because no. the name was just about nine, just total. Yeah. You know, like you said, it don't, you can keep it alive, yeah. but you don't have to overexploit it either. Nah. I feel like a lot of people, as far as the Catahoula, because of the colors that they throw, Mm -hmm. there's too many puppy mills out there. Oh, They're ruining the breed. And it's just a personal opinion. I feel like our black dogs are the dogs who aren't as diluted as far as the working dog industry Mm -hmm. because nobody wants to breed those black dogs. But That's the ones I wanted. Yeah, somebody... A a solid black dog has got... White, white, yeah. Well, you haven't seen the ones I just got, Nate. <laughs> well, I mean, Shout somebody, out to Miss Joy. Y'all yeah. people out there, a lot of y'all don't know Miss Joy if y'all ain't from around this area. Yeah. But, like I said, Dixie Dogger's got a little something up and coming, too. That's right. okay. We might not be, it might not be, you know, first place every time, but it's going to be sometime. Yeah. <laughs> and I thank JT for that, too. Oh, yeah. I, I appreciate that. I mean, we've seen those dogs work, and they've done, I yeah. mean, they're good dogs, there ain't no doubt about yeah, it. I don't eat anything off of y'all, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. that's, right. that's a couple gonna, people. I mean, we, they won't keep junk or breed junk. Oh, well, ain't no yeah, doubt. Every time I've seen Clyde, I was, okay. I, that's one of that's that's one of the dogs yeah. that made me fall in love yeah. with the Catahoula. Because yeah. like I said, you can ask him before, I, I've had people offer me. They're like, man, you know, hey, you, you want a pup or something? I'm like, nah, you know, kind of pass on it. Yeah. I'm not yeah. being rude, but yeah. if I'm yeah. not going to put my full effect into it, then yeah. why do I want it? But now it's like, you know, I see what I need to do, you know, to, to do, mm-hmm. to do this. Yeah. And I think Clyde's with a Walzak. Yeah. He got some Walzak in. Yeah. Um, and as far as a Walzak car, I, I love a Walzak more than, more oh, than really? anything. Oh, yeah. yeah. My, really the first puppy that I bought, I bought from. What's, uh, now what's the difference in the Walzak car and kind of, uh, or, I know there's going to be a secret well, recipe in that. Yeah. I mean, it's whatever they've bred to cre- yeah. create their own. It's majority. Yeah, I mean, it's it's majority yeah. Catahoula, and they got yeah. a little, they yeah. got a little, a little something else, a little there. more yeah. grit in them. Yeah, I got you. Well, we got like uh, South Mississippi, Louisiana area Parker curves. Mm-hmm. You know, I've it's like them. it's like that. And they, hey, yeah. dude, I'm telling them some guns to get it. Uh, my buddy Rodney Bell, he just lost a, a young dog. I mean, this dog, she just loaded up one day. She was real young. And Grant was out there loading other dogs up. She jumped the box, and he's like, she's going with us. Turned around. 250, 300 yards within a, three or four times going to the woods. She's in there baying yeah. and just lost her not long ago. And But we went down there and we got the yeah. rest of the litter. Hmm. We got, just went ahead and got all of them. I said, yeah. we'll just keep that thing going. Way to go. but that, like I said, that, that Walzak stuff, I've heard a lot yeah. about that. Yeah. And it's, it's one of the I old. I guess it's the first puppy that I bought was Brimstone. And she was baying at what, 10 weeks old? Yeah. She started banging on a cat. I mean, I've got some videos to prove it. If (laughs) if anybody has a question about it, she was 10 weeks old when she started banging. Really? Oh, yeah. And I paid $75 for her, and I have one. $75,000. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, big money over here. Yeah. I mean, we won here with her. It was the first time that I placed with her, and she done everything on her own. I mean, she was, she just blew my mind. I didn't think nothing of it. We just threw her in there to... Yeah. to see something and she just went in there and done it and yeah. it was i mean it was a blessing you know that i looked up and got her but we've placed here with her we've placed at bull creek we've placed at broughton island with her um she's one in the old and young i mean she's she done a lot for me and being a newcomer at that point 
I feel like I should have held her back some, yeah. you know, and that was my mistake. You know, I she was doing good, so I let mm-hmm. her, you know, do more, and I feel like it it led to her making mistakes. So we've set her up, you know, we put her up and let her, you know, ponder and think about everything. Yeah. And that's a, what I think a lot of people don't do is when a dog starts getting sloppy or they don't. I love this. You know, I they love don't. This. <laughs> now, y'all can't see Nate yeah, over I mean, there. He's like, yes, yeah, finally. These dogs. I mean, they're you know they're gonna trash them. They're gonna give them to yes. somebody else, and then they get mad when that person yes. sits them up in the back. And they don't do anything with them for a little while. And then when they break them out, and then they're yes. smoking and that ass yes. for them, and they're yes. like, "Oh well, I, I, you know, I need that dog so back." Mad. Yeah, and that—that's one thing that irks me. Like, you know, if you don't have it in you to sit there and wait on a dog, then don't know, get it. Then don't get mad when somebody mm-hmm. else gets it and does something with it. Yep. You know, don't don't get pissed off and mad at everybody else because it's your own fault. Yep. You know, you don't have the patience to wait on it. Then oh well, I mean, it is what it is. Most of our first videos just the hog hunting and stuff i had a lot of videos at one time you know of course had to take them down some of them you know a little too graphic and shit but most of the videos you would hear me hollering look at them culls because my whole pack other than maybe one or two you know just my, my purebred jags and stuff somebody was going to cull that dog and i said just let me take that dog i take him home with me they're like man i'm not gonna feed that dog he won't do it He's seven months old, he man. You, right you know, or he's or he's fifteen months old, and they're like, "Well, he ain't done." So give him a little time. Still acts like a puppy. Sure enough, we let him, like you said, stand him up, put him at the house, play with him, let him mature mentally. Yeah. Then, then we start hauling to the woods, and then after one or two times, it's like, "Hey, yeah. they're running the show." Yeah, and a male dog matures way later than a female does. I agree. And I think a lot of people they're like, you know, oh. Well, I'm not going to wait on it. I'm just going to get rid of it, you know. I'm not, well, don't say you're not because it's not that you aren't going to wait on it. You're expecting that dog to do what you want it to, and the dog isn't prepared nor ready to do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, so it's not, you know, you're not going to wait on it. It's You, you just don't want to deal with it. You exactly. Know, something that's going out there winning right now, and that's not going to happen. Exactly. But every dog is going to be like that. At one point, At in, one time, point in time, they're going to have to have that, that break yep. where they can just think about what they you know they want to and if they have the drive to. Because a lot of people, they have dogs that bay, but they're not full-heartedly in there because they love what they're doing. Yeah. And a they're lot just going through the dogs, motions. Yeah, a lot of good dogs are in there because they want to catch. Mm-hmm. If that dog doesn't have their mind to the point that they want to go in there and they want to catch that hog and they want to, you know, that's what they're bred to do. They're bred to be in there and to bathe that hog and to potentially catch. I mean, that's really what a dog's in there looking for is to catch that pig. Yeah, like mm-hmm. Corey always said, the best bay dog is a chicken shit catch dog. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's I, I, yeah, I mean, that's it. We We're going to get Corey's video, ass on here, too. We posted a video of an American bulldog who comes from no hunting lines at all. He, a he's a pet. We bought him as a pet, and he dug into the pig pen. He went in there. He started baying. And I'm like, well, would you look at that? So I thought it was cute and funny, so I took a video and put it on Facebook. Well, it started some... Oh, my Lord. It started some That's hateful shit. comments. Trash talking. Shit you know, talking. he's a cold. He's a cold. Okay. You know, you have your opinion about it. He's not a catch dog. No game bread dog. No, yeah. he, he's not a game bread dog at all. But if you would sit there and, like, really watch him, he's looking on how to catch. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's looking He just doesn't that know ear. what it is. Yeah, he's getting awesome. close and then yeah. he's backing up because he doesn't know exactly what he's And he doing. done it on his own. He went yeah. to yeah, that he, on his he, own. He was in there with four. Yeah, he was in there with four hogs. He was the only dog in there. He's what? Well, how big were the hogs compared to him? About the same uh, size as him, or they were? Uh, they're they're bigger than him. Oh well, see, that's what I'm saying. So they're bigger. Yeah, they were. That's what I'm saying. So they're bigger than him. Now, if it had went in there, and if it had been a little forty pound show, you know. Yeah, no, they're they're well, they're half then wild what? and half pot belly, but they still have at least yeah. four inch cutters on them. I mean, yeah, they got big they, teeth. Yeah, they tore up the dogs when we caught them. Oh. I mean, they're not just little. You hey, know, we had some over where we were at like that. They were. Uh, they were half wild and half pot belly pigs, and, and they were coming up in. A, they were at the edge of a national forest, and they came up in this man's yard. And I mean, they were terrorizing everything. Yeah. And them, you talking about rough? Oh, they yeah. were like little rhinoceroses. Yeah. Them some bitches was oh, yeah. mean. Oh yeah, if you you put the heat to them, they're gonna fight them. But oh they, yeah. They also let let you work a puppy or anything. Yeah. They got they got teeth and they don't know how to use them. Ain't no sure. doubt about that shit. 
Like, and they're tough. Like you said, they're tough. Little they, short dudes. They but, hard to catch. Them. All right, now back. Let's get back to that uh, chicken shit bulldog. <laughs> you talking oh, about? <laughs> well, it started all all the bull crap on Facebook. You know, yeah. Lord, everything happens on Facebook, and a lot of people were saying he he's going to be a cool white. It don't matter to me if he's a cool or not. In their eyes, I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm the one buying his feed, so I don't know what is anybody's opinion. Yeah, but I mean. If somebody wants to talk about my little cool bulldog, I know Lulu Finley. She's got an American bulldog, and she's a she's a good dog. I mean, she's a pet. She's an inside house dog. Mm -hmm. So we just pondered up that well, our little cool bulldogs. We're just gonna put them in the puppy bay, and her cool bulldog will be my lead dog, and we'll have our little cool puppy in there. And what are they gonna say when y'all win? Put them little oh, cool bulldogs. Hey. That'd be so damn funny. Hey, I mean, it is. And it takes all breeds too. I mean, look yeah. at Blake. I mean, Belgian Malinois, I mean, yeah. he just made the wall of fame. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the old dog, he, oh, yeah, he's, it's he's definitely a, a different a deal, dog, but yeah. he's a good, he's a good stout dog, yeah. you know. He's he's consistent from what I've seen. You know, like I said, I don't know near as much as y'all yeah. know, but yeah. he's every time I've watched him, he's he's been he's been right, you know. He's good. He's good with command, that's for sure. Yeah. Man, yeah. Um, all right, another thing I wanted to get to on – I want to do like talking about diff like these bay pins. Mm -hmm. All right, now how many pins have y'all been to? Would you say that you that you can think of and in locations like here in Georgia, uh, um, Louisiana, Texas, or wherever you know legal bay legal bay pins. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only made, kind there are. <laughs> we are no incriminating information. <laughs> when I started back when I was going with Corey, there was there was Hickory Crossing, Pistol Creek, Two Tight. Uh, Flat, Creek. Flat Creek, Double B, uh, Bryant's Bay Pen, Broughton Island. Island. Damn. I think that was it, but don't hold me 100%. But I think that was it. And you could. Bull Creek. Yeah, Bull Creek. Yeah. And uh, you could go bay at least once a month at each pen. I mean, most. When I very, pens, the very most first pens, time, that's the way it was. It was every month. Had, had two bands a year, and you'd have one. At the first of the year, and you had one, I mean, you stretched out. I mean, you go to, let's say, you'd go to uh, Broughton Island first of the year, then you'd come for their Sweetheart Bay in February or yeah. whatever it is, and then you'd come, like, Pistol Creek was the middle of the year, and they were, they were just spread out. Mm -hmm. uh, then I started going out to Louisiana, well, actually, Texas, out to Jake O'Connor's pen and Coons, and, and then... They started up in the ones up in Louisiana. Where yeah. So, the, like, I know we talked about it earlier, you know, the, the caliber of hogs out there. Oh, yeah. It's totally different yeah. than, than here. But, I mean, like the people, are there a lot of people from from Georgia in this area or, you know, east coast, southeast that go out to Texas and, and Louisiana? Y'all see yeah. a lot of people I mean, that you know there? Yeah. Oh, that's a few. I mean, it ain't, it ain't. Ain't as many as I mean you'd think. Yes, yeah. I mean if you got a good dog and a good steady dog that's going that is able to compete out there, they're I mean, going. Most they're going to go. go out there. I got you. Because I mean I know some of the Texas guys and Louisiana guys. They, I've seen them here at the yeah. pens, and I I know everybody tries to support each other. Yeah. Even though you know there's you know little trash talking and stuff yeah. back and forth and carrying on that. It's all about the same thing. It's all about the big picture yeah. of keeping the yeah. sport alive and keeping it going. Like you said, there was eight. Eight to ten pins, yeah. and now there's two or three. Two or three. There's two right now. And that was just in a short amount of time. Yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't. I could care less. I mean, if I ever bad dog again, I mean, I just go to see everybody. Really. Yeah. I mean, you but, think I mean, you got you got is. people that live in North Georgia, you got people living in South Georgia. I mean, we get together and shoot the shit. And, yeah. I mean, just. I feel like there's more of a family environment in our Georgia you know, at the Georgia base than there is out there. Mm -hmm. In Louisiana. And it's not Texas that everybody lives that. in Georgia yeah. either because they're everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it we're seems from, like we're from six they're, states they're so right around. Yeah. I feel like. It's all the, about the money, It's all yeah, about the, it's money, all about money, the money. money. Yeah, I mean, here it's like, you know, oh, we hit a hole, you well, know, great. We ain't got we're no money to, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, every, everybody's here to have a good time. When you go out there, it's so cutthroat about winning the money. Well, I'm going to shock my cutthroat thing, and I'm going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, we love to go out there, I mean, just to, to bathe the dogs. I mean, we're there to have a good time, and, I mean, everybody gets, you know, yeah. they, they drink a little bit, and, 
I mean, they have a good time just like we do here. Well, we had but a good time more, last night. It's more oh, of yeah. the southern hospitality here, <laughs> yeah. especially. Just a big uh, family. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean. Well, that's what I said after the. Crossing, that's like the most. It's, it is a big family reunion yep. here. I mean, we come a day early because it's like a mini vacation for us because we come to see everybody and to spend That's what time I, I took off work this time. Usually we're dragging in late Friday night, early yeah. Saturday morning, you know, yeah. getting here. And I was like, mm -hmm. no, yeah. you know, I've been here enough times now. It's like, And that's what Mark is like, hey, y'all coming early, ain't you? Y'all going to eat and all that? Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. And, and like you said, it's it's just like your family. Yeah. And, you know, like. I, I wanted to, I needed a dog. I want to mm -hmm. start getting a dog. Hey, I didn't ask nobody to do anything. Somebody volunteered, pointed yeah. me in the right direction. Didn't ask for nothing in return. I had two or three other people around. They come up to me and they said, hey, I heard you look for a dog. You know, and I didn't ask nobody there. I saw, you know, yeah. like you said, it's, it comes down to where you, you, you turn from just, hi, how you doing? Nice yeah. to meet you. The next time, you know, hey, we're, we're buddies. Yeah. Then and the next time it's like, number and you're talking once yep, a week. Yeah. yep. Then it's like, Hey, I got this over here. I got this going on and all that. It's, I definitely, like I said, and I've been to some in Texas, uh, more, more with the terrier trials and stuff, of yeah. course. And it's, it's a, it's a real good event. It's a great mm -hmm. event. Not saying that just cause I got the terriers and yeah. stuff, but the people there and, uh, it's, it's a, it's a pretty tight-knit group, too, yeah. but a, a lot of them are from Texas, yeah. and they're all together. And like I said, they're, they're all great folks. They've always treated us really good. Uh, we're going to go down to Jake's, uh, not this coming week, but the next week. Mm -hmm. We're going to go down there, and then the week after that, we'll go to the Terrier Trials in oh, Texas. So have a big vacation. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to be on the road spending some gas money up okay. and all that good shit, and we're going to go visit everybody and run around. I'm going to get this microphone out. We're going to record and talk shit with uh, with Jake and Uncle Pat and Ed Barnes and all them, yeah. and we're gonna have us a little. Uh, we're gonna have a big ass podcast, I hope. Yeah, I, you know. I yeah, I mean that's what uh, me and Jake's talked a little bit already about it, and so y'all, y'all listeners out there, y'all get ready for that, and uh, maybe it'll be a, it'll be pretty nice and civil, and we'll all get along real good, and they won't talk about how shitty our dogs are, and we won't talk about how shitty their dogs are. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pat's, gonna Pat's gonna talk about it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. My dogs ain't worth the fuck. Your dogs ain't worth the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, but hey, we appreciate having y'all on here. Um, anything y'all would like to add or say or shout out to anybody or tell somebody kiss your ass? Somebody owes you some money and you need to get it or whatever. Yeah. No, I don't guess. Uh, all right, y'all just come down to El Porro Loco and we're gonna make a ride all the way out to Texas, about fifteen, sixteen hours from over here. We're gonna we're gonna go support that bay in November. Uh, it's like 11th through the 13th. It's, yeah. it's 11th through the 14th or something. Middle, sure middle of ride. November. We'll be out there. We'll take a trailer full. Why not? I mean, it's just yeah. money. We'll get it next week. That's right. That's all you got to do. Go get some more. They, they got that shit every day. Go to work. Dirty green Go to work and go home and bait dogs. That's, That's right. Well, hey, everybody, y'all stay safe, and we appreciate y'all. And next time, we'll holler at y'all. Peace out.